So you are welcome to our second lecture. Uh, yesterday we looked at conceptual framework, conceptual framework, and uh, the Telegram page will be created by uh, Bill Prof. And uh, because it's not done yet, he told me he will do it yesterday, but I think he forgot in the evening. So. Um, I, by all means, today he will he will do it, and I'll put it on your Telegram page for you. All right. Uh, so for those of you who joined yesterday, you have access to it already. But because some of us just joined today, uh, we will put it on the Telegram, and you'll be able to have access even though you move class. All right. So we move on to ethics, and ethics is ten marks. Now, uh, we need to know the IFAC code of ethics all right so please what are the IFA code of ethics what are the five IFA code of ethics ethical principles yes i call them the i o p c and p all right so help me out what is i Integrity. Integrity. What is O? Objectivity. All right. What is P? Professional behavior. Professional behavior. Is it? All right. So what is that? Yes, anybody else can help. Yes. What is C? Competent and UK. This one, this the C or the P? It's a C. The C is confidentiality. Then the P is professional competence and UK. Is this thing is something you are supposed to know by heart. Sorry, professional competence and you can. It's something you are meant to know by heart because this is the profession you are joining. And so you are supposed to know the code of ethics. It's like, like I said yesterday, it's like a lawyer going to the court who doesn't know how to say my lord. I mean, then it means you did not learn your job. Your tool. So please, these five things there, IOPCP, you can coil it in a way uh, uh, you, you understand. All right. So uh, uh, people, people have uh, various means of arranging it. Uh, but I like putting the integrity, arranging it as it is quoted in the IFA code of ethics. When you become a chartered accountant, they will give you the book, the IFA code of ethics. They'll give you a book. And you have to be learning it. It is in there. It is a whole book on its own. It's like our constitution. So if you want to remember, uh, I want it IOPCP state. But in exams, probably you won't start writing the integrity first. Because you are going to deduce it from a case. Okay. So if you want, uh, you can deduce it uh, in any way that you want. You can say copy, and the spelling of your copy will be like this. All right? Yes. It, you know that this one will start first, second, third, third, fourth, fifth. Anyhow you want to arrange. Okay, so you can say copy, and this is your spelling of copy. All right, and you can find any means of arranging it. Now, Thomas, please, are you writing? You said, am I writing? Yes, please. Uh, yes, I have been writing, and this is my screen. I don't know. Oh, I'm talking about right now. Uh -huh. Because we can't see this one. All right, so that is, that is my screen. Okay. All right, so that is what we are discussing. Integrity, objectivity, professional competence, and UK, confidentiality, and professional.
not doing well. But what does these things mean? Like I told you yesterday, the most important thing you need to be doing is the meanings of the word, not the words, it's the word itself. What is behind the word, the idea behind the word. All right, so let's go back to the notes that we have and try and understand it. I'll be underlining some keywords. So this is 10 marks of your course. And please, like I said, it's the most easiest part we should be able to look at. All right, so now let's understand what integrity is about. So um, integrity simply means that okay, oh yeah, what you say is what you do, okay? So uh, anybody who says something and does the otherwise lacks integrity. So as a professional accountant, you have to have integrity. And listen, this thing has been a debate in my master's class before. You see, the, the code of ethics never said that the professional accountant should have integrity in his life. It said, the professional accountant should be straightforward and honest, i.e., so these are the two words you use to explain. Uh, there, are, there are others, but these are the two main words, straightforwardness and honesty. In all what professional and business dealings, so it means that the person can be lying to the wife at home, but be professional in it in his business activities, okay? So we are not interested really in the personal life of the accountant. We are interested in his professional and business relationship. Now, theories have been developed to say that the, the fact that the person is not honest in his personal life, it will definitely show up in his professional life. And some people are saying that it doesn't matter. One A person can be dishonest at home but be honest in the office. Yeah. And I was asked to choose one side and defend. I remember saying a person can be dishonest at home and be honest in the office. The lecturer asked me, how can I explain that? I said, the same way we are so honest in church, but when we go home, we are so dishonest. The same way this one too can happen. Yes, but the truth is that in the long run, it shows up. It shows up. All right, so when we say uh, integrity, two words must come to play, two sets of words. So the first one, if you are making your notes, uh, so let me let me do this. Let me do this. Uh, all right, I hope you can see both sides of my screens. Okay. Please confirm if I, if you can see the two uh, boards or the two slides that are open. Confirm for me. We we can see. All, I can see only. Okay. You can see only one. So I think you should be seeing two. I Please. see the two. All right. Thank you very much. So now, now. Uh, let's look at the keywords that explains these concepts, the keywords. Okay, so. All right. So the keywords that explain these concepts if you pick integrity, then the word that should come into your mind is honesty and straightforwardness. Okay. Then the, not, the next set of words should be fair dealing. and truthfulness. 
these are the words that you should be able to use to describe the concept of integrity. All right. Please, any question. Now, once you understand that, you, you get to know that the principle of integrity imposes an obligation on all professional accountants. So it's not like if you want to, it's by force. All right, it's by force. You need to have integrity. Okay, and the key word is that, and here is I've added something here. Please, this this thing I've sent you is taken from the IFA code of ethics itself. And it is I've started it in a way to answer an, an exam question. Okay. So it's just a 15-page document and it includes the past question for you, you to exercise. All right. Now, this is the part I want you to note clearly. It says that a professional accountant shall not knowingly associate himself with any report, returns, communication, or any other information where that professional accountant believes that it contains what materially false and misleading information. It contains a statement of information finished reckless, recklessly. It means that the information that you are giving somebody, you did not do due diligence on it. And information that omits or obscures information required intended where such omission or obscurity would be misleading. So it's either you yourself, you are misleading, you are involved in the, those misleading somebody, or the in, information that you are giving out is finished recklessly, which means that you didn't take your time to go through it. So never should an accountant be part of a submission of a document which he or she has not taken time to go through. Please, this is a practical lifestyle. It helps you to be a good and a, an effective person. All right? Because ethics are practical. So you don't sign something you've not read. All right. Then check if any information that should be there, not there, or for the purpose of kind of a misleading somebody. Please be careful. Now, if if there is such a situation where you find yourself to be there, the ethics says that you shall take the necessary steps to disassociate yourself from such information. So these are the key aspects of integrity. You need to be able to use that. When we start answering the case questions, you should be able to see and apply what we are talking about. All right. So please. The next one that we want to look at is objectivity. What is objectivity? Objectivity, the two words or three words that we want to use here is number one, neutrality. So neutrality and let's say free from bias. And I hope you understand that. Free from bias. Then the next set of words that I can give you is also what conflict of interest. And what do we call it? Undue influence. Are you being pressured? This is those of you who have done auditing, and we will discuss some of these things in audit. It's the same thing there. But here, we limit ourselves. Here, we don't do threats to objectivity and all this. The threats to objectivity will be seen in the question. Then you will comment on how to deal with it. And you see here, to competency sake, uh, I'll give you an illustration, so don't worry. For competency sake, what you realize is that the person has misapplied a standard. So you see, even in ethics, there is standards. There is standard. So... I'll give you, I'll write an example for you and explain to you how you answer your question. I will be using familiar standards because uh, I've not actually dealt with the standards with you yet. So I will be using familiar standards you know and I'll carve the particular question from it. All right, now let's talk about, uh, let's finish our issue on objectivity. So we are saying that it should be neutral, that is free from bias. 
there should be no conflict of interest because if there is conflict of interest, there will definitely be an issue. What is conflict of interest? Conflict of interest is, for example, you work for A and at the same time work for B or you work for A and have worked for B, okay? Have worked for B where you had nice or good relations with, okay? So it means that any information you get here, there's a likelihood that you can give it here, all right? So M, B, and A are in the same competitive market. For example, let's use MTN and Vodafone. All right, or let's use Apple and Samsung. All right, so these are companies that in the same competitive market. And so if you, you are in one, you cannot be in the other because what is of an advantage to A will be a disadvantage to B. So please be careful. That is, that is what you need to understand. That is what we call conflict of interest. All right. So um, what you are supposed to also note here is that if you take your time and read what I've sent you to help, but if you are giving any judgment, you should not be biased. You see, the only way you can be biased is that when you have affiliations, Okay, so you are supposed to be objective. Objective means that you say the things as it is, not subjective, not how you feel about it, but what the facts shows. All right, so that is that. So here, note here, it is impracticable to define and prescribe all such situations. What are the such situations we are talking about? Uh, situations that may impair uh, objectivity. A professional accountant shall not perform professional service if a circumstance or a relationship biases or unduly influences the accountant's professional judgment with respect to that service. So please, that is that. You should not be there. Don't do the work. Don't perform it at all. All right. So that is that. So those, you see, the other side I'm giving you is this, what we call the safeguards. The safeguards. Now, Let's come to professional competence and UK. And this one is a little tricky. But you see, uh, let me make it simple for you to understand. When we say somebody is competent, there are two things that explains competence. Number one is knowledge. So and it's not only knowledge. Number two is skill. So for you to be able to have the knowledge and the skill to do it, that is what we call competence, all right? That is what we call competence. You may know a standard, but are you able to apply the standard, right? That is why you are writing this exam. You are writing this exam because you want professional competence, all right? So what does the concept of professional competence say? It says that the accountant should be knowledgeable enough and have the right skill to be able to ensure their professional service are delivered, all right? So what you need to understand is that it is professional competence. And, and it also says that it should be up to the required level. So please, this is it. A professional accountant shall maintain professional knowledge and skill at the required level to ensure that clients or employer receive professional, uh, competent professional services based on uh, current development and please note that because current development is part and you need to know to the level of current development in practice legislation and techniques all right some of you know your accounting but you you, you don't know the the laws of ghana pertaining to your accounting some of you know your ifrs you will learn something called defense tax but defense tax is not practiced in ghana so even though you know it if you come and do it then it means that uh, what is going to happen is that you'll be misleading some people. It is not applicable in Ghana in terms of tax computation. All right. So uh, know that. But as people preparing financial statements, you always have to prepare your financial statement in accordance with the IFRS. So you will do that. That is why uh, you sometimes you have to prepare to account, do the tax aspect and do the normal IFRS aspect and fix the tax inside the IFRS. 
if you are doing that, you are going to do that according to IS 12. The GRA people will do their own. Leave them, they will do their own. All right. But if you can manage to do the GRA people's side in your account, it helps you to uh, be more compliant. So the legal aspect is there, the practice aspect is there, and the, the technique aspect is there. You have to get all these things up to the required level, the current level. For example, they've issued a sorry, they've issued out new two new standards. IFRS S1, sustainability one, sustainability two. All right, very soon it will be encapsulated in your exams. Most most definitely next year. But the fact that that standard has come tells you that in your practice or in your learning, you should learn something towards environment. Environment. All right. Because they'll be piloting it before they fix it in the syllabus. All right. So that is that. So you have to get professional knowledge and skills to what to the required level so that your clients can receive what? Competent professional skills. All right. Anytime I'm teaching this, I stand a little bit to be biased uh, in our Ghana politics in Syria. Because I feel like we should have finance ministers who are chartered accountants, who are chartered accountants, so that if they misbehave and they are not showing knowledge and skill in terms of their delivery of their service, the professional or the professional and deal with them and bring them to life. Uh, if we don't have, and you are not under the body of ICAG, whatever you do is still standing as policies. You can be let go anyhow. So, so for, for me, I feel like uh, we should have those kind of things. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that to be uh, sounding against our current minister, but I believe whoever it is, whether in this, whether MPP, just to save some sanity, uh, because you have to go by this ethical principle, and it will help us a lot. Integrity, objectivity. If you do that, in it, you come to light early, as early as possible. All right. Now, now that you know knowledge and skill, and the fact that you have to, and you see. This is the reason why CA will tell you that there is something called CPD, Continuous Professional Development. So I told you, even when you are done with your ICA, you will still be going to Continuous Professional Development. You need to file your Continuous Professional Development because the standards keep changing. So I always say, when the time I finish my ICA, do this, uh, a standard like Revenue was IAS 18. Now, IAS 18 has been updated to IFRS 15. I remember, uh, and we also had IAS 11, which has been added to this one, IFRS 15. Yeah, we had IAS 11 separately but they've combined the two. So when we get to IFRS 15, I will teach you the two. Now, I remember when I was doing my ICA, leases were, was IAS 17, but now leases are IFRS 16. So you see, if I say I am a chartered accountant and I'm still going by this to prepare the account for people, I am misleading them. So I need to upgrade myself to the competence level that is required for me to do a job, which means that I'll have to be applying IFRS 16 and 15. That is what it means. Now, so that is what competence is about. So the CPD, for somebody like me who finished this thing in uh, this period, I will need to go for a CPD on these standards to be able to understand it more. Continuous professional development. When you finish, you'll be doing it. Continuous professional development. All right. Now let's look at the part that says due care. The word that explains due care is diligent. Diligent. See a man diligent in his work, he will stand before great kings. That is what the scripture says. This diligence 
is equal to what we talk about over here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? The fact that you should disassociate yourself uh, from this honest information. And number two, most importantly, you have gone through the thing thoroughly before you give up. Have you been in a situation where you are an accountant and you submitted a PDF item for presentation, PPT, PowerPoint, or PDF item for presentation, and there were so many mistakes? It means you did not exercise diligence. So please, diligence is part how you go about your work. You know it, you can do it, but how you did it is a problem. So you will need to take your time and arrange the thing as it should be. Diligent. All right. You do the thing according to the standard. All right. So please take note of that. And so it says that the professional accountants are act diligently in and in accordance with applicable technical and professional standards. And this is where your standards come to play because diligence has standards. And then you have who say, if I wake up and I dress shabbily, it means I'm not I'm not following the standards for dressing. All right. I always say, let's compare somebody who works, normally compare the way you dress to your office to those of your colleagues who work in the auditing firms and those of your colleagues who work in the banks. Compare the way you dress with them. Probably it will help you to shape or change some things. All right. Now, so you act diligently in accordance with all those things. So we have talked about competence, and you need competence to, to be able to give sound judgment. All right. So please, that is that. So I, I like you said, I've, I've mentioned here, you need to obtain the competence and also maintain the competence. Obtaining the competence is what you are doing. You are, you are learning to go and write ICA exam. That is you obtaining the competence. When you finish, you now maintain the competence. So continuous professional development, being aware of new changes uh, that is happening. All right. So I've explained these things here. All right. I've explained it here. And I've also explained diligence, uh, you having the responsibility uh, in accordance with your assignment. So your your contract determines what you should do. So those of you who have, especially in the public sector, those of you who have taken a contract to work good for the public sector, but when you get there, you do otherwise. You take the time you go to work and all those things. Uh, you are not acting professional. These are the things that the white man understands, but we don't. All right, so carefully, uh, you 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 do your job carefully, thoroughly. It means you have gone through over and over and over, and it has to be on timely basis. All right, so please, this is it. Uh, where appropriate, the professional accountant shall make clients and employers and other professional services aware of limitations inherent in their service. Please, this is very key. Problem Let them be aware. It is under professional competence and due care. So please let them be aware of limitations. And so there are limitations. Please let them be aware. All right. Okay. So these are the things that we are going to use as safeguards, letting them be aware. All right, let's go to, we are left to just two. Let's go to the two. The next one is confidentiality. What is confidentiality? Confidentiality, you can't add, you remember the man said the ability of a person to keep things secret. Yes, it, it gives a picture of confidentiality. Um. So here we said that the, Professional accountants shall uh, respect the confidentiality of information uh, acquired as a result of their professional dealings and not disclose such information to third parties without proper authenticity unless uh, uh, 
without proper and specific authority, unless there is a leader of professional right to disclose those information. Now, what I need to explain to you is that when we talk about uh, confidentiality, we are talking about we use two things, two words. Required and permitted. In terms of disclosure of, of information. Now, there are instances where you are required to disclose the information. You don't need a permission. You, need, you are required. And there are instances where you need a permission permitted. You see, per required aspect, you know, is when a thing is kind of illegal, all right? It is illegal. The company is doing something illegal, all right? The company you that contact you are working with is doing something illegal. And, I mean, it is in the public interest for you to disclose it to the authorities. And the required, we disclose the required to the authorities. Who are the authorities? Yoko, ICA, uh, uh, what do you call it? And all those things. All right. So please take note of that. But the, the, apart from this one, you need to uh, seek permission before you can disclose. So you don't use information you obtain in your professional dealings to your, for your personal benefit or any other issue. The only time you can disclose without taking permission from the company is when you are required to do so. Please take note of that. When you are required to do so. So you cannot use the information for your personal advantage. Please take note of that. All right. So. These are the two ways. And please know when you are required and know where you are permitted. All right? Know when you are required to disclose and know when you are, you have to also get permission to disclose. All right? So please take note of that. So this is what I've done. The following are the circumstances where professional accountants are or uh, may be required to disclose confidential information or when such disclosure may be appropriate. Disclosure is permitted by law and authorized by the client or the employer. So the permission one, okay, you have to seek permission. That is permi perm uh, perm permitted. Then we have instances where you have to disclose because the law requires, for example, production of documents or other provision of evidence in the course of a legal proceeding, if the person is at court and they ask for documents, you don't need the permission of your people to provide. You just provide. Disclosure of appropriate public, uh, appropriate public authorities of infringement of the law that comes to light. You have to. All right. So please take note of that. The key thing we are discussing is that there is a professional duty or right to disclose when not prohibited by law. All right, so please take note of that. All right, you have to comply. All right, in your report or in anything you have to. So know when to uh, do those things. The last bit is the professional behavior. Professional behavior works in line with this one, integrity. All right, it tells us that you should not do anything that will bring disrepute. So the key word is disrepute. Ungu. Uh, Good profession, any master, men, you may be a good profession, any master. I.e., men shall coat and bow tie and got to be as in the kinky and rain chenam giddy giddy beer. Present yourself well, men bokrono. All right, you all of you have heard of the uh, the uh, first Atlantic bank man who had a side check and had to be taken to court and. Uh, it's not professional. He is a, he's part of ICA. Uh, so people were calling on ICA to take his head. But I see whatever the case is, the court had to decide and, and we, we, we know what actually happened. All right. So 
uh, you should comply with laws and regulations. So compliance is part. All right. Okay. So what are we saying? Don't go and steal. Don't go and... Uh, uh, I mean, don't behave in a way that you bring discredit to the institution. So uh, when you are qualified for your exams, uh, and the word is discredit, when you have qualified for your exams, before you become a member of ICA, they take you to La Palm Beach. Hotel. They show you how to use fork and knife to eat. They show you that dressing is important, the kind of food you should eat, and all those things. And that is where we raise the argument that if we belong to the society of chartered accountants, chartered accountants should determine uh, some kind of minimum wage to be able to eat the kind of food that they want us to eat. Because you can't tell us to go into the hotels all the time. We don't have such money. So far, job salary is based on demand and supply. So if they can fix some minimum wage, then we know that we can also have some minimum food to buy. So um, this is it. In marketing and promoting themselves at their work, professional accountants shall not bring the profession into disrepute. Professional accountants shall be honest and truthful and not make some any exaggerated claims for the profession or the things that they are doing. So please, uh, that is that. Keep yourself in check and make sure that uh, you don't discredit the institution. All right, now, in your exam, they will give you a case. And in the case, you are supposed to fish out the ethical issues and also probably provide a solution, safeguard. So how do you approach So when you pick, this is what I've done for you, approach the question. When you pick a question, what you are supposed to do is that you are supposed to, first of all, at the back of your mind, know the ethical principle, IOPCP, or copy, whichever way you want to go around it. Then, what you do next is that uh, you initiate your resolution process. Now, what do you do? Look at the relevant facts in the question. What is the question about? Okay? Look at the relevant facts. And trace the relevant facts to the ethical issues involved. Is the issue about integrity? Is it about objectivity? Is it about professional competence? Is it about confidentiality? Or is it about professional behavior? See, anytime you see an integrity problem, you will also see professional behavior problem. So it goes together. All right. Anytime you see objectivity problem, which means the person is biased, means that something is doing can discredit them, and therefore professional behavior also comes. Anytime you see professional, the person not exercising professional competence, it means that at the end of the day, professional learning is too much. And so, therefore, professional behavior also comes. Anytime you've seen that somebody has not, come, has not kept things confidential and has used it as his personal advantage, it means the person that wasn't honest and therefore professional behavior also comes in and even integrity also goes. So, they are all interrelated. So please be able to fish them out. So look at the facts in the question. Then look at the ethical issues involved. When you are done, look at the fundamental principles related to the matter in question. So now that you know this thing, okay, so Sir Fred. Yeah, Tom, can yes. you go over this, what you just uh, mentioned again? Uh, I, I have interest in that one. Which one? Wrong. Where you are matching integrity to professional behavior, objectivity uh, to this professional. Yes. All right. So I was saying, you know what? I mean, so if the person is not honest, it tells you that he is conducting himself in a way that it will bring a discipline to the entity or a, a professional. Or, yeah, I still have a hand. Uh, Thomas, please, your, your voice is low. I can't hear you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is it better now? Hello, is it better now? Yeah, yes. 
something. So I go over again. So what I'm saying is that if somebody is not honest, it means that Obama falls in what he is. And instructor also falls under professional behavior, telling you that the instructor falls under. Sir, please, I can also hear. All right, then hold on. All right, so what I'm saying is that this professional behavior, the reason why I like putting it at the last is because all the four are in it. What does this one say? It means you should be complying to standards. All right, you should not do anything that will discredit the institution or the profession or bring disrepute ungu uh, profession anymore so that is why i'm saying that look at obi awashi ica washi quote not the ica a you need to be a born for everybody to know is the chartered accountant but on a kwahuna or we bro and a bro in the name na no huna i hear you what will you say what will you say hmm be our what to unchain chartered accountant be to unchain or share or come or deal broken or win what will you say because ah the accountant may pray what we are just saying is that just present yourself well all right present yourself well whenever you 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 put on your icag tag uh it is said that look at the adverts of bank bankers look at the advert of uh, auditors auditors don't normally do advert that much but in on your tv screen you always see adverts run by bankers look at them then look at the advert that is run by somebody who is selling buruku to ginger gin or uh, any social stuff you see that bankers for the you know, jet. everything is on point so they don't show, show their body parts and all those things. They dress well. Dressing well these days has become dressing corporate. That is what we call it. But I mean, it's just dressing well. Yeah, the APD media tagging is a corporate, corporate. No, no, no. You are just dressing well. All right. So I was saying that if you if you are dishonest, which means you are not being having integrity, whatever you are going to produce will be false. You are going to be dealing in false dealings instead of fair dealings. And therefore, you realize that that thing will not be a good behavior because your chill say you didn't give true information, it will discredit the profession. So automatically, it also fits into professional behavior whenever somebody has issues with integrity. Objectivity, if you become biased, if you are not neutral, if you do the thing, there is a conflict of interest, or there somebody has unduly influenced you. you no, know, you say sometimes who you be a juma, or no, a person or chill. Mr. Fred, you are, you are, you, you, you've been with me before. You know how it is when I was in the office. Sometimes it looks as if, let me use the masons, for example, when they are building for us. All right. How to do the job. Fine. Let's take the issues of when they want to actually defraud you aside. But when they are doing it, we will not allow them. We will be like, do it like this. No, do it like this. I don't know do it this way. Do it this way. Do it this way. Do it this way. All those things. Yes, I have been in a situation like that. And especially in the Ghanaian companies that is how it is you are going to be your professional accountant and you are doing the job as it should be but they will tell you that we we want it this way 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 when in between that you are turned that is what we call it undue influence and sometimes they will tell you that that is what they do so they unduly influence you for you to do that but as a professional accountant you are supposed to uh and uh, desist from such kind of job okay? let me be practical with you this code of ethics are developed by ifac ifac is not in ghana it's the abrofono 
or the principal ne ba said ye juma ni si fati. Na u ye manija u ye huan huan, na u kan otherwise ah. That time no, but he will quit. So they develop this for us. But unfortunately, in our side of our world, who quit ya, a come ne be do. So how proper is it for us? But what well, we are supposed to learn it anyway because ebi anenye Ghana hamkwa na be yu. All right, so that that is that. But I don't use Ghana situation to explain. No, I beg, use what it is to explain. So if you don't, if you are, if you are not objective, you are on deal influence. You do the thing in a way to benefit your company, but it will bring a disrepute to the profession in the long run. And therefore, whenever you have issues of the objectivity, you automatically have issues of also what professional behavior. Professional competence in UK, I didn't even need, you didn't have the knowledge, you didn't have the skill, and even though you have the knowledge and the skill, you didn't do your job diligently, you didn't go through thoroughly, you didn't check all every mistake, and therefore people will disrespect you. All right, and the fact that people are disrespecting you, you are leading them to disrespect the profession too. So automatically, issues of professional competence also bodges on. Uh, professional behavior. Confidentiality, if you disclose something that you were not permitted to disclose or you are not required by law to disclose, you did it for your personal gain, then it means that on so background, you are also not exhibiting integrity. All right? And so therefore, that one will also zoom into professional behavior. So professional behavior is at the base of all of them. All right. So in the exams, check the relevant fact connected to the ethical issues the, these are the ethical issues then what are the fundamental principles related to the matter in the question these are the places here 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 the explanations that we've given you those are the fundamental issues all right then uh establish internal procedure because assembly didn't can can of here so can of here now and yeah then you take an alternative course of action by going out or by quitting the job. All right. So that is that. All right. So having considered all the relevant factors, a professional accountant shall determine the appropriate course of action, weighing the consequences, weighing the consequences of each of the course of the action. If the matter remains unresolved, the professional accountant may wish to consult other appropriate persons. And please, whenever you are explaining confidentiality, eh? You can add seeking legal advice without compromising on your confidentiality. Bibi how you can go to the therapist, but please don't go to the therapist and telling the therapist everything because you are disclosing things you are not supposed to. All right. And and if even if you say it, let the therapist give you a document sign that says that anything between you and him remains there and doesn't go out. All right. So that is that. So where the matter involves a conflict with, with or within an organization, the professional accountant shall determine whether to consult those charged with governance, such as the board of directors or the audit committee. In the other case, you know, can you go over the head of the person who is influencing that thing happening? You ask yourself. All right. So uh, it may be of the best interest of the professional accountant to document Please, this is key. Whatever it is, document it. Because assemble one document here, one record one, you have nothing to show forth for it. So document it. This is one of your safeguard. All right. So document it. Seek internal resolutions. If not, go outside and seek advice. All right. So that is that. So I've added this thing to you to help you. Um, solve the question we are going to solve practical questions now the past question very soon so here i said that if any significant conflict cannot be resolved then you consider obtaining professional advice but whatever professional advice you take whether legal advice or whether everything don't compromise on what confidentiality so the professional accountant generally can obtain guidance and ethic on, on ethical issues without breaching what confidentiality please that one is very important if the matter is discussed with the relevant professional bodies on any anonymous basis or required uh, or with a legal advisor under a protected what legal privilege, I've told you, let them sign. 
let them sign. All right. For instance, um, instances in which professional accountant may consider obtaining legal advice varies. For example, a professional accountant may encounter that major dream, and that is where uh, uh, your standard is always hinging on. The reporting of which could be breach of what accountant responsibility in respect of what confidentiality. Yes, you are breaching confidentiality. What do you what do you have to do? So the professional accountant may obtain legal advice in that circumstance, whether there is a requirement to report. All right. But whenever you are doing this, I said what well, don't compromise on confidentiality. If or if after all possibilities are exhausted, the ethical conflict and the ethical conflict remain unresolved. A professional accountant, where possible, refuse to remain associated with the matter creating the conflict. All right. So you shall determine whether in that in the circumstance, if it is appropriate for you to withdraw your engagement from a specific assignment or the team or resign altogether. So these are what you have. All right. So please, any question? Any question? Because I am done. Right now, what I'm coming to do is to walk you through how you use everything we have said to solve a question. Before we go into the past question, let me construct one question for you. Let me construct one question for you uh, so that we use that one. All right. I want to, I will pick a standard that you are so familiar. Yesterday, we did one of the standards. Uh, I didn't teach the standard, but I opened your eyes to one of them. Uh, so I'm going to use that one as our first scenario. Then I will use Okay, you, before I use that one, let me first use this one. Please, um, everyone answer me this question. What is IAS2 about? Oh, this thing is too deep. It's very deep. What is IAS2 about? In this okay. It's even still deep. How many of you have heard of IS2? Uh, Thomas, is it not the one talking about inventories? Yes, inventories. Why is this thing so deep like that? No, 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 no. So I think this one can be here, but I can reduce. Yes, it's about inventories. What do you remember about IS2 inventory? What is the, what is the measurement criteria for, what is the subsequent measurement? For inventory. Yes, who can tell me? Lo lower cost and rela net realizable value. All right. Please, you are correct, but check the way you say it, eh? Because the way you say it determines the way you act it. So it is lower of cost oh, um, mm. and net realizable value. So the lower of the two. So if I have in my in my SOFP balance sheet, it is the lower that should appear as my closing stock. So let me ask you a question. If my cost is 5,000 and my net realizable value, you see net realizable value means fair value, less cost to sell. We did, we did, valuation yesterday we talked about the fact that measurements the standard gives four valuations 
it's actually two, but when you when you analyze them where well, it is four. The standard says you can use historical cost. Number two, you can use current values. Current values has three under them. So number one is recover, uh, recoverable value or replacement value. Number two is uh, value in use. The number three is fair value. So when you add that to the historical cost, you see that you have what we call four, uh, four measurement criteria. So net realizable value simply means fair value less cost to sell. What is fair value? The price you can obtain it in the market minus any cost incurred in obtaining that price, all right, or selling the thing. All right, so let's say our net realizable value is 4,000. All right, so what do you think our closing stock would be? Uh, the 4,000. Okay, is the 4,000. I was going to call a name. 4,000. All right, good. So this is what your exams is all about. So if you know this principle of IAS2 and they bring it in your exams, you should be able to pick the 4,000. So you see, when I tell you that your exam is law, it's not about accounting, punching calculators, you should understand me. Because if you don't know this law, you will never get it correct. You'll be confused which one to use. Now you look to, but you grab it at the know they take it average, which is which is wrong. Now, you know the principle. What do you think this one is? The fact that you know that it is the lower of cost and net realizable value. Which of the principles, the five principles we discussed, do you think best explain the fact that you know this standard and you have applied it here? Yes. Who can tell me? Who can tell me? We just did the five. Which of them best explain the fact that you know this, you know this standard and you have really correctly applied it here? Yes. Okay, first. Professional Fred. competence. Somebody, please, uh -huh. so please kindly learn the way uh, Mr. Fred is doing it for us. Eh? Let me see your hand raised. Yes. Uh, so, Mr. Fred, go ahead. Uh, I side with Fred, professional competence. Okay, good. Professional competence. Please, and do care, can we? Always add it. Do care. So now, this is how your ethical term mass is like. Watch this. Answer is the newly employed chartered accountant in Positivo Limited. His engagement began 0101-2022. During the audit of 2022, financial statement it was recovered it was discovered that inventory which had a cost of 5000 on 31st December 2022 was recorded in the financial statement 
on on fourth March twenty twenty three. Those inventories. actually sell at 5,000 CDs with selling cost of 1,000 Ghana CDs. The financial statement recorded inventory at 5,000 CDs. Identify the ethical issues and recommend Identical ethical issue, if any, and recommend safeguards to correct <clears throat> the issues. Ten marks. All right. So, this is it. So, who can, who can assist us in dealing with this situation? Yes, if we are able to do this one, then we now can take a look at the past questions. So, uh, step one is for us to actually look at the facts, right? And relate the fact to uh the ethical issues involved what is the fact about and normally the fact uh is about a standard or standards it can be two or more then the issue is the ethical iopcp iopcp then fundamental principles here in the question is the explanations of the explanations of the IOPCP. Then here it talks about you resolving your safeguards. All right, so now looking at what we have on our screen now, who can tell me what we are to do? Yes, who can tell me what we are to do? Yes, who will try? Who will try? Please, this is how your exam is. So your ability to be able to do this, you realize that that is how it is in the past question. All right. So your ability to be able to do this matters. Yes, who can try? Should I call names? Okay, that's Fred, let's move. So uh, Thomas, underline newly employed chartered accountant. Newly employed chartered accountant. And then uh, the valuation, valuation of stock. Uh, where is that? You see here, they had a cost of 5,000 as at 30, oh, okay. 20. okay, okay. Then as at 4th March, the selling price of 5,000 with the cost of 1,000. Uh -huh. I think All that right. is great. Identify so this one in attempting it, I think it will boil down to the professional competence of yeah. that particular person because it's a newly employed chartered accountant. Now, looking at it, sometimes we are newly employed. I said newly employed, not newly qualified. Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. I thought it was newly qualified, newly employed. Okay, so newly employed might happen that he might have some experience elsewhere. Yeah. 
in practice, but where it is a duly qualified, that one means the scale and others will not be apt. Okay, so maybe I'll come again. <laughs> oh, you can continue. Okay. No, but I said, hey, sorry, I should have raised my hands. Oh, go ahead. You go the ahead. The mere fact right that the person did not uh, do the right thing means he doesn't have experience. So I think the person who was talking uh, was on the right track. Yeah, because like he I was saying that. Continue. Yeah. Uh -huh. He he was discouraged because it wasn't a qualified yeah. accountant. Yeah, the person might be qualified, yet he didn't do the right thing. So he, the person lacks experience or competence. So number one issue you have identified is what professional competence. Competence and what you care, right? Please always add the you care. I beg you. All right. So what makes you think he didn't uh, exercise professional competence? Like you said, uh, it is it is wrong to maintain the five thousand. Why? Because according to Julia, uh, when it comes to IAS two, so like I said, identify the standard in question. There are two standards in this question. Two. Two. Who, who can actually identify those two standards? There are two standards. Uh, Mr. Kwabena, you've not spoken in this class before. Sheila, you've not spoken in this class before. Uh, so please, let us hear from you. What are the two standards in play? Because you should be able to reference the standard to get your more mark, like I told you. The fact. What are the two, two standards in this question? Of course, we have not done the standard, but I've, I, 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 I expect that you should be able to identify at least one. Yes. Yes, yes. Because if you don't know the standard, how do you know he didn't exercise professional competence? The skill, what skill? The knowledge, what knowledge? Yes, please. Hello, sir. Sorry, I don't know where to raise. I should raise my hand. You, we don't. That's don't worry. I think I've taken off that law. Everybody uh -huh. can. Yeah, sir. I can think of uh, a professional due care, a hey, competence. Lack of competence, eh? Oh, competence. What makes you say he lacks competence? On what grounds are you saying he lacks competence? That is the question. Because uh, the standard says that uh, we uh, this one relates to inventory. And it says that the cost should be the lower of... Uh, Good. So in your exams, your ability to realize that it is IAS2 is one mark, one, one. Anytime there is an embedded standard in the question and you are able to bring out the standard that according to IAS2 inventory, so, so, and so, and he has done it, so, so, and so, it's one mark. That identification of the standard alone is one mark. So please, knowing the standard matters. Read the examiner's report. Knowing the standard the thing revolves around matters. Of course, we will be doing the standards, so it will make it clear to you that, oh, okay, this one is this. But there are two standards in this, thing, this question. But please, if check, the account is being prepared for 2022. Is that not true? Mm, yeah. Why should a price in 2023 affect the 2022 account? Yes. Did you did you check that? I just even saw it. Too. <laughs> uh -huh. So so be careful. Like like I say. Please, this exam 
some of you fail because you are not practicing diligence. You don't read a thing thoroughly. Be careful. Be careful. So, yes, who can tell me? The standards are two in there. So, see, know the standard and the name of the standard. It is also part of your marks. Know it. When we start learning the standard, please know them. All right. So, can yes. we say events after reporting dates? And what is that standard? <laughs> IS, uh, is it 10 or? IS 10. All right. So what that event after reporting day says. So event after reporting days, you see, this is this thing is an event after the reporting date. This is the reporting date. And this is an event after the reporting date. So what does the event after the reporting day says? It says that if there is any event, favorable or unfavorable, that happens between the reporting date and the date financial statements are authorized for issue. That event must be grouped into two. One, adjusting event. Number two, non-adjusting event. If it is an adjusting event, then it gives an evidence of something that existed at the reporting date. If it is non-adjusting event, it gives evidence of something that existed after the reporting date. So this one you see is clearly an evidence of something at the reporting date, which is inventory. And so it means it's an adjusting issue. So the 5,000 day recorded has to be adjusted by going with the IAS2 principle, the lower of cost and net realizable value. So you will now come here and say that the cost is 5,000. The net realizable value is what? 5,000 minus what? 1,000, okay? Which will give you 4,000. And therefore, they should be recording the 4,000. The fact that the person has not recorded the 4,000 can come from two things. Number one is professional competence. He has not, he doesn't know the standard. Have you seen it? He doesn't know the standard. And please, anytime you are able to fish out this thing in this regard, what you are supposed to know is to know the intent behind it. You see, this one, in this case, you realize that it is IAS2, and therefore we are picking the lower. And therefore, guy, you know, it will be purely by uh professional competence a bia onim onim ye and a onimun so i want exercise due care in doing it in tina a man but most of the time the other standard you should check whether the person did the mistake this thing is a, it's an error so step two is most of the time so we've seen that we've seen the ethical uh the ethical issue which is this one uh i told you the fact that you've seen professional competence means that you can also talk about what Professional what? Behavior. Behavior. All right. So you already you have to, because what he has done will bring disrepute to the profession. People say it's accountant. People will now conclude that accountants don't know their job. All right. And it is degrading the, the integrity of the institution or the profession. So you, you add that. But what I want you to also check in this question is that, did he commit it as a genuine mistake, which is, issue of competence or he did it purposefully so that he can manipulate the event the the things surrounding the inventory so you you add that so you do the what if analysis so if he did that to manipulate then it's amount to what fraud and if it is fraud then it is about what integrity Please, have you seen that? Have you seen that? Did he do it because he was pressured by somebody so that he, he did it this way, even though he already had the knowledge, he did it this way? If he was pre pressured by somebody to put this figure in, which one of them, which ethical issue will you, will you bring? Which one will you add? Objectivity objectivity so have you seen that in this question we have four have you seen that all right so we can extend the conversation to go to where he was confused he went to seek somebody's advice blah 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 then you later on add confidentiality 
most of the time they they limit you to four yeah because of the mark allocation so that they can mark it uh we bear 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 now about two marks now they are can or much so your explanation to it because you have to add you also have to add uh, what we call the resolution because the question says that recommend safeguard all right so what will be the safeguard for professional competence what will be the safeguard for professional behavior what will be the safeguard for integrity what will be the safeguard for objectivity all right so if you have com professional competence, we, we said that what do you do? You have to upgrade yourself with a new level of information. And we said that whenever you are dealing with the issue, you start internally. So you it is the job of the professional accountant to explain to uh, the managers that this is what the standard says and all those things. If they disagree, we learned that you can go to the board of directors or the audit committee. If it is beyond that, you seek professional advice or you start thinking about you disassociating yourself in doing this, that will uh, uh, give false information about the financial statement. Or quarterly, quarterly, you can resign. All right, so that is that. The professional behavior, I mean, in trying to safeguard the name of the profession goes along with the same way. You discuss it, you, you take necessary steps to disassociate yourself with this fraudulent staff, all right? And uh, you can also seek legal advice and also resign, all right? You can do that. Integrity, yes, you are supposed to be straightforward. You disassociate yourself, you report them to, in terms of the internal reporting, you can also resign. All right, objectivity, the same thing, the same thing. You tell them that you have to be objective. You have you, you stand the chance of not being biased. So instead of frauding yourself, frauding the thing to get benefits from yourself, doing it not on a doing it on a biased manner, you say that they should not do it on a biased manner. And if the office doesn't allow them to be objective, then you take the necessary step to disassociate yourself or you resign. All right. So that is that. So ladies and gentlemen. You see, that is where the issue is. Identification of this thing is always one mark. So please, when we start learning the standards, I beg you, take apt attention. All right. Because ethics never for part 10 months, but who name standard now? Why have to me on something? All right. Now, let's look at some of the past questions. Please, I'm going to be doing something. I'll be giving you an assignment. And I would want you to work the assignment in groups. I don't know how you can help each other, but you should be able to contact yourself. Like we always say, this is a professional class. Uh, those of you who don't know, Mr. Fred is an auditor. So if you work at a place, he's an audit partner. If you work at a place where you have financial statements, you want somebody to come and audit and all those things, you can, you can connect to him. That is the essence of having professionals in the class, is connection. So uh, those are the things you do. So try and connect to yourself, help one another, help each other, come up with ideas and solve questions that we'll be giving you. All right, so I'll be doing the group, I'll, I'll do that. So I'll share it among you, we are like five here. So, and I know people will join. Other people will come and join. They are sorting out payment issues, just like people join today. Um, so those are the things. As they grow, uh, we will be giving them groups, 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 groups. So for now, I will share the group between three and two. Okay. So that is that. Now let's let's we have like thirty minutes. Be, uh, so I will give you uh, uh, some of them as your assignment. We will be doing some of them. In fact, our job is to do all of them because this one is a special class. In the Utumiye, all of them are. Now, you are prepared. You've gone through all of them. It is a whole revised note. Uh, it makes it easier. We have all the time because it's a special class. We have it. In fact, we have 30 days in a month to learn the standard. The mainstream, you have only four weeks to be learning standards. 
and no cry, yeah, yeah, boy, uh, it's two, uh, it's two meetings Friday and I think Sunday. So in a month, you have just eight meetings, but you people, you have 20 meetings. The working days are 20. So that is the differences between the two classes. So we have time for you to work with you. All right. So now, look at this. Fiaja Limited is a retail company in Ghana. Nanayao Kaula is a member of ICH. is the finance director and has been on this role for many years. Let's say, wow, 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 wow. So a member of ICAG has been on this role for many years. Fiaja Limited has year ended 30th June each year. Anaya Kaula is finalizing the financial statement for the year ended June 2019. On the other hand, the warehouse manager of Mr. Fiaja has uh, of Fiaja Limited has recently advised Nanaya Kaula of the significant level of slow moving inventory and that the inventory in question is now more than seven months old. As I tell you, more than seven months old. And per the company policy, and per company per the company policy would usually have been written down. Some months previously. So now go some more writing it down. Da, 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 da. On the other hand, the shareholders of Yaja are trying to sell the company. And the chief executive officer, who has happens to be the majority, so CEO you know, is the majority shareholder of Yaja Limited, has told Nanayao, Nanayao is the FM, that it is not necessary to write down the inventory values in the year-end financial statement. Anaya Kaula is sure that the CEO wants the financial statement to carry an inflated valuation because he has found a prospective buyer for the company. The CEO has indicated to Nanaya that if the proposed deal is indeed successfully, all employees will keep their job including Nanaya Kaula and the finance director, Nanaya Kaula, will receive a pay rise. All right, so what is the question? Explain how Nanaya, explain how the finance director, who is Nanaya Kaula, could potentially act in order not to breach principles the I5 code of ethics. That is five marks. Recommend possible actions that the finance director should take as a member of ICAG in dealing with this ethical dilemma. You all heard the case. You heard the sorry, you heard the case. So I'll be doing this case with you. Then I'll give you some assignment. Yes, what can you say? What can you say? And you know, you heard the case. You, you've seen the spirit of the question. What can you say? Yes, what are... Yes, what are the issues? You could see intimidation here. Okay. And so please, the intimidation, we never mentioned intimidation. Fine, you see intimidation. That is a good note. But we never mentioned intimidation, intimidation. as part of our five code of ethics, did we? No. Where did that one fall under? The intimidation fall under. Uh, so don't go and write intimidation. 
Mr. Thomas, so Inter uh, inter objectivity. integrity. Objectivity. Okay. The objectivity answers the intimidation. Yeah. Please learn them well. Oh. So the reason why you are saying that is about undue influence, Meboa. Exactly so. Yes, yes. So we are fishing them out. Yes, any other thing? Then uh, professional competence also comes in here. Okay, so what makes you say that? Professional competence is when you read the passage at the beginning, it says Nanaya is a member of IC, has many years of experience, so he has a due skill that he must exhibit in a scenario okay. like this. Professional, com did you add a due care? Yes, and due care. Mm -hmm. Please always add it. Yes, any other? Thomas, like any? you always see, the professional behavior too. It's, it's, it's automatic. I think his integrity. You also see issues of integrity. All right. Yes. Okay. Now, for you to be able to identify this, refer us to the issues in the... Please, this thing is... Uh, it's five marks, but don't worry. It's not by force that you should say five. But the more you do, if you say two, you lose marks. If you say three, you lose marks. If you say four, you may lose marks. But because most of the time, and you said that apply in the, in the case, most of the time. And you could see here that I said, I have on far information beyond call out, baby, and I call you information for uh, personal benefit or or anything but you can also bring it in here uh the fact that there's a fraud going on and you he may have to report given the extent of the fraud you see somebody is coming to buy the company you get it and when this close to adding to the right authority can you see that he is also uh being part of the fraudulent activity I, I, have you seen that Yes, if and if so, you compromise, then it means you're associating yourself with the fraud. So, issues of confidentiality. So, once you are able to pick these things out, you are supposed to explain them in line with the question. In this kind of question, the only standard applicable is the IFAC five code of ethics itself. <laughs> There is no IES standard. The IES standard that seemingly is related to would have been what? And you can still bring it. It's what? What, what standard do you think it's about? The moment you saw warehouse, it's still about IES too. IES. And you see, what they are trying to communicate to you is the principle of lower of cost and what? Net realizable value. Because they said that the thing should be written down. That is the the lower realizable value. All right, please, have you seen that? So please master this thing. I mean, be on top of it. Really be on top of it so that you actually know what you are talking about. It is 10 marks. So do, and please, uh, 10 marks means that you are using 15 minutes to answer it, 15 minutes. So please don't waste time there. 15 minutes, but 15 minutes you are done. 15 minutes you should be done. Wakwa Brosua wasted time cry 18 minutes. We discussed those things yesterday. Please. Wakwa Brosua should be 18 minutes. But the practicing time you should stick to yourself and practice with these kind of questions is 15 minutes. So start rehearsing, start doing that in 15 minutes. All right. So you take objectivity and you mention the fact that he's being influenced by the CEO, um, which will not allow him to be straightforward uh, or he, it will cause some biasness uh, 
in terms of the treatment of the inventory. All right. So uh, that is that. And please watch the phrasing of the question so that when you are answering it, you answer it to meet the question. This question, if you don't take care, it is like it is the same as the B part. Look at this. It says, explain how the financial director could potentially act in order not to breach. So how he should act in order not to breach is the question. Now, Abaha also recommend safeguard possible action the financial director should take as a member of ICAG to deal with the ethical dilemma. Is it not the same? Check it well. Check it well. Is it not the same thing? Please tell me something. Is it not the same thing? They look alike. Mm hmm. It is a whole answer. Answer ye. Okay, just write it well. Could potentially, what you would do so that you could potentially. So you bring out the issue and you add it. Just add it. So could act in order not to. Here you are saying that there is an undue influence which will impair objectivity. And therefore, what he's supposed to do is to stand on his feet and on his ground, according to how the standard uh, 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 presupposedly uh, teaches him to do. Then when you come to the safeguard for this same one, then you say that you, you, you phrase the same thing in another manner. All right. Not all questions are like this. Some of them will tell you to identify it and bring the, the safeguard. But this one, it was very tricky. So know how to answer them. All right. Then you bring in professional competence and due care. Okay, so professional competence and due care. How will you explain that? Yes, Mr. Fred. The part A side of the question, side of the question. Is mm -hmm. saying that who potentially act, meaning he has not acted. Yeah. But who potentially act. So yeah. I think I understand it that the answer should not actually espouse that he has done it. But things that can come to him that will let him do that. Is that yes, what, yes. what the question is saying? Yes. Oh, okay. Because the guy hasn't done anything. Nanaya has not done anything yet. That is why they are saying could potentially act. So could potentially act. Do you remember I told you you use the what if analysis? Yes, you said that. You said that. Mm. So that is how you can use to explain the professional competence and due care. So he can side with the CEO, which means that he has not done the thing right, according to the knowledge and skill he has he had. And he has not worked diligently. And so that one will result in this. And the moment that one happens, with this thing happening, this one is, uh, is, is just coincidental or incidental. It happens automatically because of these two. And, when he, and if he also side with the CEO, it means he has not acted with integrity. So use the keywords that I gave you, all right? If he cites, uh, he will not be straightforward. He will not be honest and those things. Uh, confidentiality, mm, they are defrauding somebody and he should report it to the authorities. Yes, this one, he doesn't need any requirement. So if, if, and the thing is that, will he report himself if he is part of the entire Kabuda? That is the reason why this one stands out. If other people are doing it, all you can say is that the see the person hasn't done it all. The CEO hasn't done the defrauding. You know? If the CEO does the defrauding, it means Nanayao did it with him. So if the CEO is doing the defrauding with Nanayao standing outside it, Nanayao can report.
But here, what he can do is that he stands as a confused state and he can see professional advice not compromising on, on what? On what? Not compromising on what? Confidentiality. Please take note of that. All right. So that is that. Then you come to the B part and you solve the problem. All right. Come to the B part and you discuss the solving of the problem. So the solving of the problem is that it should be objective. He should not be allowed the influencing to affect him. I.e., he can report to the audit committee or the board, take necessary steps to disassociate himself from the fraudulent activity that is potentially going to happen. Quarter, quarter, he can resign. Professional competence, the same thing. All right. He should exhibit and treat the thing according to the standard, i.e., IES2, the thing should be at the lower of the rate it should be at the written down value yes fred yeah but thomas when you uh, study the passage carefully it says that the md is also the majority shareholder so yes, if you yes. say you are going that, to vote that top, report that top up uh-huh go on so when you say you are going to report to those charge with governance the man is the md himself and is the majority shareholder so that one I think we should have a, a second uh, so look at it. That's why I'm saying that you look at reporting to the people at the top. If they are also part of it, then you go to the appropriate authorities. So in this case, that they are also part of it, you report it to the appropriate authorities. I.E. I.C.A. Mm? Yes, you have to report to ICA because they regulate it. Or you can go to you. But Tom, I, I, have an, I have an issue here. Uh -huh. You see, at this point, the whole transaction is an invitation to treat. They have not yet done it. So how do yes. you report to the appropriate authorities? Yes, so... It's like not been said, actually carried out. Yes, we are using the if analysis. Oh. It hasn't been done. So if you use the happens. if analysis. Yes. If it happens, okay, yes. that's fine. Yes. But you see, this man is at a very confused state because his job is also at stake. I told you in Ghana situation, this is what happens to us, all accountants. If you don't do it, you see the warning they give. You, did you, you saw this part. The CEO has indicated, and like you rightly said, the CEO is yes. part of the shareholders. So if the proposed deal goes through, you get rise. It is trying to tell you that if it doesn't go through, salary in years, here between the 20 years. So that is the issue. And so since he's in a confused state, he can actually, uh, in terms of confidentiality, seek a legal advice but, uh, uh, as to uh, whether, what to do, because he's confused. This, these things are not easy. It happens. So. It happens. It happens. Me, I've resigned the job because of that before. It's either you go by the status quo or you 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 resign. Yes. It happens, man. So, so being a Christian and an accountant is not simple. It's the most difficult thing in the world. But don't worry, even God himself reviewed himself as an accountant in Genesis chapter 15. So don't worry. He knows your profession. Yeah. Is that okay now? Is, is that okay now? All right. So you use the what if analysis and you you know you know how to discuss it. The same thing, integrity, if because the person has not done it yet. But in some of the cases, you see that the person has done it. All right. If the person has done it, check the motive behind the doing. If it is intense now, then it is subjected to integrity issues of fraud. Then if it is unintentional, it is even it is subjected to issues of competence whether fraud or non-fraud or error, it is still issues of 
uh, competent. All right. So please, that is how you go around it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have we have 2020 May, we have November 2020, we have May 2021, November 2021, we have April 2022, August 2022, December 2022. Uh, then we will later get the March one and work and also the the july paper and also work it now if you sat in that paper and you have the question at home you can now go ahead and read it again and see did you answer it correctly so you can even mark yourself um so uh that will bring us to the end of today we will definitely solve all these ones all right so uh, that one is assured. So you can take your time and even read it and jot down your answers and your reason, your reasons to your answers down, even before we meet. Please, any question at this point, because I want to use the rest of the time to have a discussion, which will not be part of our recording. Any question at this point? Yes, any question at this point? All right, so thank you very much for today. Now, 